Question 13 from the 2019 Advanced Higher Physics Examination of the SQA. A student uses a double slit to produce an interference pattern with green light from an LED. And this is shown in figure 13a. You can see the green light LED source, the double slit, and the screen 2.95 metres away showing you the interference pattern. It's not drawn to scale. The LED emits light of wavelength 550 nanometers, and the student makes the following measurements. 14 fringe separations is 43.4 millimeters in length, and the distance from the slits to the screen is 2.95 meters. And for four marks, we have to determine the distance between the slits. Now we can go to our formula sheet and we can see which equation is going to bear the variables which we're looking at here and you can see it's going to be that third one down delta x is going to be equal to lambda capital d over small d now delta x is the actual distance between each fringe small d is the distance between the adjacent slits lambda obviously is the wavelength and capital d is the distance between the slits and the screen so that equation there circled is the one we're going to use of course, we have to rearrange it to find out what d is in terms of that expression. Now, if you're not quite sure of that expression, you should really know how that expression has been derived from. And what we'll do, we'll write that equation down, first of all, because that's what we're going to have. Uh, we're going to have delta x is going to equal to uh, lambda capital D divided by small d. That was our equation from this one up here. So let's see how we actually derive that. Just as a little bit extra revision in case you don't know which one you're going to use. Now here is a diagram of what we've witnessed. You can see we have a green ray of light coming from the one slit and another ray of light coming from the second slit. And both of these slits are very small. And if the ray of light reaches here, and our top one reaches here by this path, and you can see there's going to be a path difference between the two slits. And therefore, that path difference is going to introduce uh, a phase difference, which is going to introduce either constructive or destructive interference. But we can see from the diagram that this is going to be the first maximum from the central maximum. So therefore, we know the path difference will be one wavelength. So if we take a central triangle here and call that angle in there theta, so we can just call this angle in this part here theta. That's the angle the first maximum will be from the central maximum. We know capital D is the distance from the screen to the actual slits. And that's what we've got up here also, that it's going to be delta x. That's going to be the distance between each adjacent fringe. We measured 14 of them. Now, the path difference can be drawn with a triangle as well, and there's a path difference in here. And we know that for the first maximum, the path difference is going to be lambda. So that small distance in there is going to be lambda. Now, by similar triangles, that angle in there is going to be theta as well. And this distance in here is a distance between the slits, which is small d. So you can see we have got all the information here from the diagram just by looking at the the first triangle from the central maximum to the first maximum, angle theta, and this other small triangle there to show you the path difference lambda represented by theta and small d. Two similar triangles. And because they're similar, I can now look at the ratio. I can see the ratio of delta x over d starting from opposite the angle. So the ratio delta x divided by d must be equal to the same ratio in a smaller triangle. So start from across the angle, lambda divided by small d. So there we have our relationship just solved for us there. You can see if I rearrange that, therefore I can get what small d is. And small d is going to equal to lambda, big D, divided by delta x. So that's the equation we're going to be using. You can see we, just, we can easily derive that from this equation up here, which is given in the formula sheet. So that's the equation we're going to be working with. So let's plug in the values and see what we get. Well, we know that uh, in the following case, we'll just start over here. Therefore, d is going to equal to lambda, the wavelength, which we knew is 550 nanometers. Now, nano is times 10 to the minus 9 of a meter. Capital D is the distance from the screen to the interference pattern, to the, to the to this actual sl uh, slits. That's going to be 2.95. So we multiply by 2.95 plus 
put a bracket around that to keep it safe, and divide by delta x. Now, delta x is calculated by measuring the distance of 14 fringe separations. So imagine I was measuring 14 of those gaps between the fringes and getting an answer of 43.4 millimetres. So if we divide that 43.4 millimetres by 14, we'll get what one gap is. That's the gap between each fringe. So 43.4 millimetres, to keep the units correct, 43.4 millimetres is 43.4 times 10 to minus 3 of a metre, just to remember that. And we're dividing that by 14. Put that in a bracket and you're ready to go with your calculation. So you can easily do that in these calculators. And the answer we get in this particular case is going to be the following. It's going to be 5.23 times 10. And it's going to be times 10 to minus 4 of a metre. And that's your final answer. You can easily keep your answer in that form. It's not asking you to change anything. You can change it into millimetres. That's times 10 minus 4. So we can put down then 0, moving the point one place away. 5.23 times 10 to minus 3. And that'll be a metre. But we know times 10 to minus 3 metre is a millimetre. So 0.5 three millimetres. Or we can just round up and say 0 0.52 of a millimetre. So the distance between the slits is going to be 0 0.52 millimetres. Question 13, part A, part 2. Explain why the student measured 14 fringes separations rather than measuring the separation of just two adjacent fringes. And the whole answer to that is that uh, by measuring 14 fringe separations, you're reducing your uncertainty in your measurement. And we can easily show this by showing you a comb, which is a good example because it's very similar to working out the fringe spacings. In this case, we're working out the spacing between the comb, the comb tooths in this case. So we've got two ways of doing this. We can take our ruler and we can measure the 60 spaces over a length of 120 millimetres, 12 centimetres there on your diagram. Or we can measure just the space between two adjacent combs, two, two adjacent tooths there. But one of them is going to produce a very big uncertainty, another one is going to produce a low uncertainty. So we look first of all at the uncertainty in the measurement of the ruler. Well, the uncertainty we'll look at here is the half the smallest division. The smallest division is one millimetre, so half of that is a half a millimetre. So the uncertainty in the comb measurement is going to be 0 0.5 of a millimetre. So what's the percentage? What's going to be the percentage uncertainty if we take the full length of the comb? Well, the percentage uncertainty, we'll just call it percentage U uncertainty, is going to be the uncertainty in the ruler, 0 0.5 millimetres, divided by our measurement, which in this case is going to be 120 millimetres. And we have to multiply that by 100. So that percentage uncertainty in the measurement would give you a value of 0.4%. So that's measuring over the whole length would give you that of an uncertainty. So what's the percentage uncertainty? I'm just using U here again. Well, it's going to be equal to, if we measure just one space, one space is going to be uh, maybe a value of about, say, up here, about 2 millimetres. So we have got the uncertainty in the ruler, 0 0.5, divided by our actual measurement, which is over the small gap of just between two of the tooths of 2 millimetres, and multiply it by 100%. And that's going to give us a percentage uncertainty of 25%. So you can see, measuring the spaces, the 60 spaces over that distance is actually the best way to reduce your uncertainty in your final measurement. So to sum up then, why does the student measure 14 fringe separations rather than just one? Well, first of all, it's easier. And second, it drastically reduces your uncertainty measurement in your final answer. Question 13 continued, part B. The student replaces the green LED with an LED that emits red light. Apart from colour, state how the fringe pattern now observed by the student differs from the pattern produced by the green LED. And for two marks, you must justify your answer. Well, we go back to our original equation. 
which we've been using, delta x, the fringe spacings, what's per after, is equal to the wavelength lambda times capital D, capital D being the distance between the slits and the screen, divided by small d, and small d is the actual distance between the slits. Now, we know that capital D and small d are not going to change. So capital D and small d, no change. So what we can do in this case then is just let that equal to a constant. And therefore we have delta x is going to be directly proportional to the size of the wavelength lambda. Which means if you've got a bigger wavelength, the distance between the fringes is going to get bigger. And you actually can see that in this picture which we've taken of the fringes which appear for red light and the fringes which appear for green light. Now red light has got a much bigger wavelength. So if you look at the diagram, lambda is much more is much bigger than the small wavelength of green light. Now that will go back into the equation over here and you can see that for delta x proportional to the wavelength, if you have a bigger wavelength, the fringes are going to be more far apart. And that's what we're seeing in the picture. There's the central maximum. There's the first maximum edge for the green fringe, the first green fringe. And there's the first maximum uh, for the red uh, light, and that's the edge of it, and that's where it ends there. And you can see definitely the spacings between the fringes has actually got bigger. So that bears with our theory. So therefore, the distance between the fringes is proportional to the wavelength. The bigger the wavelength, the more spread out they're going to be, therefore the distance between the fringes is going to be bigger. Question 13 continued part C. A second student uses a different arrangement to produce an interference pattern. Monochromatic light of wavelength 550 nanometers is shone onto a soap film at nearly normal incidence. The light is reflected from the soap film and an interference pattern is, a, is visible on the film. And this arrangement is shown in figure 13b. And what we mean by nearly normal incidence is that the monochromatic light and the reflected light are very close together, which means they're almost coming off in the same direction. And that angle there is near enough almost zero. So let's see the question we're going to be asked then. This is an expanded side view of the soap film and light rays is shown in figure 13c. And we can see the monochromatic light going in and reflected ray 1 and reflected ray 2. The soap film is thicker at the bottom, that's because the gravity is pulling down the liquid in the wire frame, so the soap film will be thicker at the bottom. Now 13C continued, part I says, at Y, the thickness of the film is 3.39 times 10 to minus 6 metres. The refractive index of the film is 1.46, and for three marks we're asked to determine the optical path difference between reflected ray 1 and reflected ray 2. So we go to our formula sheets, we can find out that the information we need to know is that bottom sentence there. It says the optical path difference equals n times the geometrical path difference. So when we look at the film itself, we know for a fact that we can actually put in the distance here, because that distance and this distance is, is actually the same. And if we call that the t for the thickness, and t for the thickness in there, then you can see that the geometrical path difference is 2 times t. Those two rays have been very, very close together, the angle being very small. So we know the geometrical path difference. All we have to do now is work out the optical path difference. So the optical path difference, I'll write as OPD, is equal to the refractive index, which is going to be n, and n is going to be 1.46. I multiply it by the geometrical path difference and we found it out to be 2 times the thickness of the soap film at that position which is 2 times 3.39 times 10 to the minus 6 of a metre. So the optical path difference that light traverses through that soap if you work it out in your calculator is going to be something like 9.899 times 10 to the minus 6 of a metre. And we can make that into, into the significant figures, two significant figures, by saying it's 9.90 times 10 to the minus 6 of a metre. And that's the optical path difference traversing the soap bubble. Question 13, part 2. 
there's an area of destructive interference at Y. The next area of destructive interference occurs at X, where the film is slightly thinner. Determine the optical path difference between the reflected rays at X. And this is for one mark. We know as the soap bubble gets uh, near the bottom, it gets much thicker because gravity is pulling down the soap solution, concentrated down the bottom, therefore making it thicker. Now we also we also know that the optical path difference giving destructive interference at position Y was calculated as follows. It was 9.90, 9.90 times 10 to the minus 6 of a meter. Now, when we go down to the next fringe, the next dark area of destruction, then because the uh, the soap bubble is getting thicker down here, we're really adding on an extra wavelength to give us the next destructive interference pattern. So going down the way, we would have the following. We'd have our original path difference 9.90 times 10 to minus 6 meters. That's this one here. And the next destructive interference would be one wavelength added to the path difference. You'd have to add on a wavelength of light there to get that. And likewise, the one at the top of this one, so we can, the one we've been asked to find is X, then it's going to be the exact same because it's the soap bubble's getting thinner, it must have a path difference of a wavelength less than this one down here. So it's going to be 9.90 times 10 to the minus 6 of a metre and take away a wavelength. And now you can see the pattern quite clearly. If you're dealing with this destructive interference fringe here, then if you move into the soap film thicker, then the path difference is going to be bigger, but it must be of an order of one wavelength to give you the next destructive interference fringe. And similarly, if you're here and you move up to here, you're moving to a thinner piece of a thinner area of the soap bubble, which means that the path difference must be reduced by a whole number lambda of the wavelength to give you another destructive interference. So what is the optical path difference at position X? Well, the optical path difference uh, at position X uh, it's got to be equal to uh, 9.90 times 10 to the minus 6 metres. And you're going to take away the wavelength of the light, which is 550 nanometers. So you have to take away 550 times 10 to the minus 9 of a metre. And when you do that, you'll find out the optical path difference turns out to be 9.35 times 10 to the minus 6 of a metre. And that's your answer.